Uh, my name is Tim Brown. It's T I M B R O W N. I'm the fire chief, of the city of Richmond. What do you? Uh, when did this start? What do you, what's sort of basics? That you I don't have the exact time of when this all started. Uh, it was sometime after two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, originally came in as a structure fire uh, somewhere here on the 600 block of Northwest Fifth Street. Actually, we've seen the plume of smoke from the firehouse, and we all responded to, to find a semi-trailer behind the uh, main fire building here behind me. It was fully involved. It was fully loaded with uh, unknown type of plastics. Uh, the fire spread from the semi-trailer to other uh, piles of plastics that were around the trailer. We only had one access into the to the, where the fire was. All the other access roads were blocked by piles of plastic and other semi-trailers. So uh, once the fire got out of control and darkened down on us, we backed out real quick um, and then went to a defensive mode. Are the uh, the fumes and the smoke from this fire hazardous because of the contents in the trailer and the buildings around it? I will defer that to the fire marshal here. Uh, I know we have state EPA and IDEM here uh, with air monitoring, but I'll, I'll defer that to the state fire marshal. Yeah, I'm Steve Jones, the Indiana State Fire Marshal, and uh, the, the smoke is definitely toxic, and so I know uh, we've put out an evacuation or, or within a half mile, I believe is Correct. what it is, and so uh, we don't want the residents in the smoke. So as the wind changes, we may change the direction of the evacuations. Um, and other than that, especially the elderly people have difficulty breathing is to stay inside or temporarily move out of the area at the time. Anything people should, I mean, is there anything people should do? I mean, I know you guys have issued the evacuation room. This smoke is going for past that, right? I mean, yeah. What should people know, do, uh, protect themselves? Yeah, is, is, is uh, you can protect in place if the smoke's not too thick in their community and just stay inside, get your pets inside, elderly people inside. But if, if there's a lot of smoke is, they need to get out of it. They need to find a, a temporary place to, to stay. And honestly, this fire is gonna, it's gonna burn for a few days. It, so it's a big enough fire that it's just not gonna be tonight. It's gonna burn a while. Is there, so, is there ongoing testing? Uh, are, are you guys doing testing? Yeah, we have, our, we have our hazmat team here and IDEMs here. And so doing air monitoring. Um, but as you can see, the black smoke is, you don't need an air monitor to tell where it's at, what it's doing right now. So definitely downwind of the, of the incident people need to, to avoid getting in the smoke and, and getting out of harm's way. Yeah. Are there so, other buildings around this one that are threatened? Like, is, are you, is this fire, like, are you concerned if it's spread or do you have it pretty much contained? Like, The fire is contained right now. Uh, we did have six other buildings that were on the site that had caught fire. Uh, we stopped it uh, just before the Northwest 2nd Street and we stopped it at the railroad tracks. So it did not jump into the residential neighborhood. We stopped it there. And of course, we stopped it uh, just west of the building there. So none of the houses here on Northwest Fifth are in, in jeopardy what now. What kind of building is this, sir? What, what do you know this to be? Uh, it used to be uh, the old Hofko building. They used to build um, weed eaters okay. uh, type of thing, small engine type uh, motors. And it stores plastic now, is that It correct? stores plastic now, yes. Okay. How much plastic is in there? I have no idea. I can tell you that the building is completely full from floor to ceiling and from wall to wall. When you, say, when you say plastic is being housed there, who owns it? Like who is housing the plastic there? I don't have the gentleman's name right now that does, uh, that owns the property. Um, I will get that for you and, and get back with you on that. Any of your firefighters injured in this? We had one firefighter that uh, had fell down a ravine uh, in the trailer court, behind the trailer court, uh, injured his ankle. Uh, he was treated and released from Reed Hospital. And now I know it's early on, but is there any evidence that this fire may have been caused uh, in a result of foul play? No, we don't have anything yet. Uh, like I said, it was the semi-trailer that was on fire prior, you know, and uh, the state fire marshal is here with his investigators. And uh, once we get the fire uh, contained and cooled down, uh, and have enough time to get their investigators in to see what possibly caused this. I assume this, this full call out for you guys uh, and you have some assistance, right? Right. We have uh, all of our city fire apparatus here and ambulances. Uh, we have surrounding counties, uh, surrounding county uh, apparatus here also. 
Um, we have other apparatus from the county Command, manning bro. our firing stations right now to cover the city while we're tied up here. Go ahead. We're hearing that there were propane tanks inside of that facility that did blow um, when the fire started, and potentially propane tanks outside. How big of a concern is that for you guys when you're dealing in such an active situation? It's an absolute concern because we don't know which way the trajectory is going to go. So there were several um, propane tanks that run the tow motors, and then they had a 500-gallon uh, tank that was uh, there, but it was bleeding off, and we kept water on it to keep everything safe. Chief, where does this rank uh, as far as fires go in your career? It's probably the largest fire I've seen in my career. Okay. This is such a massive, massive facility. How uh, does that create challenges for all the different firefighters that are working to put out the blaze? Yes, it creates quite a challenge because we only have access to one side of the building, and that's the front side, and to the one side, uh, what we would call the D side of the building. We had one lane in and that was it. So we had to go in that lane and back out that lane real quick. But we can't get around the building. So we're, we're surrounding it in every uh, little area that we can on the other side of the railroad tracks in the neighborhood. Um, anywhere there's a, a place for us to be able to get an apparatus in, we did. And we use our master streams to keep the fire under control. Do you know if, if at any point the owner was warned about all the stuff that he had in and around the property and if that was a violation of uh, any kind of fire? He, ha he has been warned several times. Uh, we do have an unsafe uh, citation that was issued to him. I don't know exactly when that was, but we were aware of the situation. We were dealing with the situation, uh, but that is as far as I know about that. Is it frustrating for you then that... Uh, it's, it's very frustrating for all of us. Um, the battalion chief on today, he was very frustrated when he pulled up because we knew it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when this was going to happen. With the amount of melted plastic now inside, does that make it tricky for firefighters to put out any kind of potential hot spots? Maybe not even just now, but in the coming days? In the coming days, it'll be um, treacherous. Uh, we have already have front end loaders uh, sitting here uh, that are front end load tractors that are going to pull this apart for us. So we'll be using them and working closely with them to, to get into the hot spots. The six other buildings that you said were, were nearby, were those all businesses? Or? It was a part of the same business. Oh, it's part of the same business. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said you called in mutual aid. Who else responded to this fire? Um, we have Centerville Fire Department. We have Boston Fire Department um, and Fountain City Fire Department, Cambridge City Fire Department. Um, we've also have New Paris Fire Department and Webster Fire Department um, manning our stations uh, until we can get manpower um, back down and get out of here. Do you have an approximate size of the building? I do not. He said about 175 thousand square feet so massive. I don't it's a massive facility yes just, just to recap this with the fire marshal these evacuations of this area they remain in effect this evening and through tomorrow uh, yeah unless something drastic changes is we'll keep monitoring the the weather and see which way the smoke's blowing and hopefully overnight the smoke will be less uh, but this as big as it is and it's just going to be burning for a while and so we'll try to do the best we can to get it knocked down uh, so it won't make be so much of an impact in the area. What's your guys' role here? What, what What's sort of your role here look like over the next couple of days? Well, the uh, State Fire Marshal's Office, we support the local fire service. And so anything that Richmond needs as far as manpower, we have our investigators here. We have our hazmat team here to help do air monitoring and just, uh, just help the local jurisdiction here through the night. And probably next few days we'll be here also. What kinds of chemicals or chemical compounds are you worried about creating such a toxic smoke for folks living in the area? Well, it's got a, anything that burns has a lot of toxic chemicals. So you can't just say it's just one. There's a host of different chemicals plastics give off when they're on fire. And so it, it, it's concerning and we want to make for sure that we, we give the people a heads up uh, about an evacuation and, and just keep monitoring uh, the local media for the fire department in, in Richmond, just if we have to change directions, that we can do that over time. Chief, just to clarify, there had been some, we, there had been talk about that this was a city-owned facility. This is not a city-owned facility, as far the, as you know? The city owns part of it. Okay. I'm still getting, gathering information as to what transpired with that. Okay. And then a private citizen owns part of it? Correct. Okay. And he was the one that was issued the, the warning? Correct. Okay. What's, what's that officially called? Uh, unsafe? Unsafe uh, building. Okay. Any concerns that there might have been anyone inside that facility at the time? There were workers on site at the time we arrived, so they said there wasn't anybody 
uh, everybody that was on the grounds was accounted for. About how many? Do you know? I believe I I have personally seen four, but I don't know the the exact number. And EPA is in round here as well as IDEM. I believe EPA and IDEM are here. I just heard that over the radio as we were talking. Okay. So. Anything else? So anything else that we didn't ask you? you guys no, could we'll have more information later as we gather it. Okay. Perfect. Any okay. later tonight that we should, we should expect? Uh, or? Probably not. It'll okay. be tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. Uh -huh.